Hello, ladies and gents. This is Dave Cocking from Design Builder. We'll start the webinar in about one minute's time. Uh, we're just waiting for a number of people to uh, to join us live. Thank you. Hi, ladies and gents. Welcome to this Design Builder webinar, introducing our latest ASHRAE 90.1 and LEED modeling tools. I'm Dave Cocking, and with me today is Andy Tyndale. Co-presenting will be Tim McDowell, Executive Vice President of our US partners, TESS, who are based in Madison, Wisconsin. During today's webinar, Tim will do a live demonstration of the latest ASHRAE 90.1 PRM and LEAD workflow within Design Builder. And we'll also illustrate other capabilities, such as the outputs you can use to gain LEAD daylighting credits. We'll also talk briefly at the end about our integration with OneClick LCA for LEAD compliant lifecycle analysis. During the webinar, Tim will be using the latest beta version of Design Builder, and that should be ready for full release early next year. You can submit questions at any point via the questions box in the control panel, and we've allocated time at the end to answer as many questions as we can. The webinar is being recorded, so you can access it later if required. In today's webinar, Tim will demonstrate how you can easily move through the workflow you see here. Quickly generating the baseline building and HVAC systems, and then generating results. So without further delay, I'll now hand over to Tim. Hello everyone, everybody. Um, in today's webinar, we're going to concentrate on the workflow for performing an ASHRAE 90.1 comparison using the Design Builder software. Since we are concentrating on that specific workflow, we will not be showing the basics of using Design Builder to create the building geometry and to set the proposed building parameters. Instead, we will show a few specific settings that you need to make on your proposed building and how to create the baseline building and HVAC systems. Then we will cover the various output reporting that helps you complete a lead analysis. The basics of using Design Builder to create a model are covered in the online video tutorials and in other webinars. And uh, just a quick note that um, Dave just brought up, in this webinar, I am using the version six beta release that is scheduled to be released to the public in early 2019. So on the screen, here is the Design Builder software with an existing small office building model. I will use this model to dem demonstrate the workflow for creating the baseline building. If we look at the quickly at the block level, we can see it's a fairly typical office building with um, common space, corridor space, offices, lobby, nothing too uh, earth shattering there. If we want to look, get a quick overview of more of the building model parameters, we can use the new model grid view tool. This tool allows us to display um, much of the model data in a spreadsheet form across the entire building. So if I look at the zone activities internal gains,
can see it displays a spreadsheet with the data for the various zones of my building. We have the activity templates and any template that's at the default template level will be shown in blue and any template that has changed from the default is shown as red. So with this tool, you can get a very quick overview of what different templates and different settings you've used in your model. And it's, it's great for reviewing your model. And included with version six, you can now edit this data directly in the spreadsheet and have that translate back into your model. And you can even export this to a, a spreadsheet or import data from a spreadsheet directly into this view and then have that data automatically changed into your model. We go back to our, our model here in Design Builder. Before we create the baseline building, we should check a few settings to prepare for the baseline wizard. So if we go to site level with our model and look under the region tab, you can see a setting for the mandatory energy code. This should be set to either ASHRAE 2007 or ASHRAE 2010. Typically you will select this when you add a new building to your project, but it is possible to make this change later. So if you start off with a project that's not an ASHRAE 90.1 building, you can come in afterwards, make this change, and then be able to create a baseline building. Still staying at the site level, if we go to the location, we can check on the the information for our weather data and climate for our building. For this building, our location has been uh, Chicago, Illinois. So we've selected the template for Chicago. Uh, as you can see, there are somewhere around approximately 6,000 different locations across the world that have uh, weather templates that you can select. And by selecting that template, it will automatically assign the weather file to use for that location and the ASHRAE climate zone based on that weather file. It is possible in doing a lead analysis that your building may be a a distance away from your weather file and that the climate zone will not be the correct climate zone. So if you need to override that, you can make a different selection here. Now, if we go to building level and look at the construction tab, we should check that the geometry convention template is set to ASHRAE 90.1. In Design Builder, you, when you draw your geometry, you use 1D lines to represent the walls. But in actuality, the walls have a thickness, and how that thickness is applied based on the position of the lines can change the floor area and zone volumes. But by selecting the ASHRAE 90.1 convention, the zone areas and volumes should be the same between the proposed and baseline buildings, even if your wall thicknesses between the proposed and the baseline are different. Then because a lead analysis involves both energy and cost, you should have include a tariff in the economics analysis so that the cost of your electricity and gas can be applied correctly based on your tariff. Once we've checked all of these settings, we can go ahead and create our baseline building. So to create the baseline building, we select the Generate Baseline Building tool, and the baseline building wizard will start. On the first screen, 
you see a summary here of those choices uh, for your building and the location, including the energy code, the type of use location, including the weather file, the climate zone, and your floor area. If any of this information is incorrect at this point, you should cancel out of the wizard and correct it before generating your baseline building. The next screen gives us a summary of the walls and windows and shows our window to wall ratio, which on this building for our proposed building was 60% on most of the elevations and even bigger on the, the north where we had a 100% um, glazing for the lobby, the lobby entrance. And you can see that for the baseline, it's going to reduce these window to wall ratios to 40% based on the 90.1 rules when it generates the baseline building. And the final screen shows you a, a summary of your lighting and that you've selected in your proposed building. Again, if any of this information is wrong at this point, it is best to cancel and make the corrections in your proposed building before generating your baseline building. I click finish, then Design Builder will automatically create the baseline building geometry and um, model parameters for us. When it's done with this creation, it's going to show the baseline building next to the proposed building in the project. And while these buildings are shown next to each other, when you're actually running any uh, simulation, they do not shade each other. Okay, now it is completed the, the baseline building. And if we look closely, we can see clearly the difference between our proposed building with the 60% window to wall ratio and the baseline building with the 40%, including you can see it on our entrance facade that has changed. If we go ahead and look at our, go to the construction tab and look at these were our construction, wall constructions for our proposed buildings at the default level. And if we get the same thing for the baseline building, you can see that the wall constructions have changed to be the appropriate wall construction for the climate zone that is uh, selected for our building. So Design Builder has automatically made these changes for us. If we look at the Activity tab, you can see that the Activity template has not changed between the two because the 90.1 requires these inputs to be the same between your proposed and your baseline building. And this is true even if we were to look at one of the zones that has we've overridden the default template with a different choice it is still the same between the baseline and the proposed so now we have the baseline geometry and model parameters but what we don't have is the baseline hvac system so to create that if we select the hvac system under our baseline building it will start the hvac system wizard Again, we'll get an initial screen that summarizes the data from our proposed building, including the number of floors and the condition floor area and the for our building and the fuel type. It is possible that Design Builder has estimated the number of floors incorrectly depending on your geometry, and so you would just need to set this to the correct value for generating an HVAC system. On the next screen, the wizard will suggest our baseline uh, HVAC system based on the building size, which in this case is a packaged terminal uh, system. And so we need to 
that is the system that is appropriate for our building. And we need to go ahead and say that is our primary HVAC system for the baseline building. Then we need to select the zones that will be served by that system. And for this building, our restroom spaces have their ventilation air already defined as an exhaust schedule. So we don't want those to be served by individual zone systems. So we'll remove those zones from our systems. Then you'll see an option here to override template defaults. So with this selected, you'll go through a number of screens that will show the defaults that will be used in generating your baseline HVAC system. And you can change those defaults before the system is even created. Even if you're not planning to override those, temp those defaults, it is best practice to go ahead and leave this checked and at least review those so you know which values are being used in your, your system. So here, we'll see the defaults for the HVAC system, and we're gonna accept those defaults for this and say finish and allow it to configure our HVAC systems. Even if you didn't change those defaults and need to do that later, it's not a problem. You can always change those directly into your detailed HVAC system in Design Builder. So once this is finished, it will create all of the zonal HVAC systems for the building, which there were a number of zones, so it has created about 26 different systems. That's a lot of systems to create individually, and it would have taken significant time to input those without the wizard. All of these systems have been created using the 90.1 rule set, but it's important that you review the data to make sure that the design builder choices match your interpretation of the standard, especially checking on minimum efficiencies, pumping powers, pre-coil requirements, and heat recovery requirements. In the end, it is your responsibility to make sure inputs are correct before submitting the results for review. But this automatic baseline wizard has really done most of the heavy lifting of you to get these systems into your product with uh, good defaults that uh, based on the rule set. If you've already created your baseline building and as your project goes on, there, there need to be changes to the pro proposed building geometry or their internal gains or schedules, it is necessary to regenerate your baseline building. The best approach for doing this is to go ahead and delete the existing baseline building and create a new baseline building and HVAC system using the wizards. This is usually a faster process than trying to edit the baseline building to match the edits that you've made in your proposed building. So now we have a proposed and a baseline building and HVAC systems. So now we should run the analysis. So going to the simulation tab, we can do the energy plus analysis and view the results. So if we go to the ASHRAE 90.1 tab, and I must have clicked a, made a change somewhere because I had saved my uh, data. Well, maybe here. Yes. So I still, earlier I ran the proposed building. And so you can see we already have the analysis of our proposed building done. So we just need to do the, analysis of our baseline building for the comparison. So you can see the update button, which I, important uh, tip here is be selected on the baseline building if that is the analysis you want to do. So now I'm on the baseline building, Select update data, which will open my calculation options. You can see it's set up to do a baseline analysis. Um, because it is a baseline building, we can change the solar distribution to be uh, minimal shadowing since the building should not shade itself. On the output, uh, we can select different output reports that will be uh, completed after the simulation. And 
For a lead analysis, it's uh, important that the lead summary, the annual building utility performance summary, and the demand end use summary components, end use component summary, uh, be selected at a minimum. The simulation manager allows multiple simulations to be run at the same time. So the different orientations can all be run simultaneously. It is also possible to run simulations in the cloud using the, the Jest servers if you have an account, and I'm going to do that now for, uh, for the quickest uh, simulation so we can have results. In, in doing this uh, webinar, I went straight to the ASHRAE 90.1 to do the analysis. And really, a, a better workflow would be to start on the analysis page and do, um, do the simulation for just the, the one base rotation and check that for errors and correctness. They're, they're much easier to see with a single run when you're doing the 90.1 with the baseline, it's going to do all four of the orientations and then average those results for the display. So it's harder to see um, differences in or errors in the simulation when they've been averaged together. I also want to note that um, while the, the simulations are run and the re results are displayed within Design Builder, all of those energy plus output files are saved to your local hard drive so it is possible to open those files and look at those results um, using the design builder results viewer uh, which which displays all of the output values that have been selected from energy plus or other output viewer that you may uh, like to use so now the baseline simulation is complete so on the screen, we see the energy savings uh, between the baseline and the proposed, which in this case is just over 42%. If we want to look at it on the cost basis, um, we can switch the display to be costs, and we can see that the um, savings is a little lower at 39%. And it gives an estimate for your the points that this would be credited. So that is a one example with a, a fairly small building. So now I'd like to do a second run through a second example, but with a, a larger office building. So first I'll open that to project. So this is a five-story building with, and it's approximately um, 100,000 square feet. And it's a little, a little hard to see on this display, but this south facade does have um, overhang shading on the windows. The, again, an entrance facade of 100% glazing. And if we look at the north facade, we have the uh, window to wall ratio reduced to 20%. So if we, we can quickly review, we have um, ASHRAE 90.1 2007. We're in um, St. Louis with this uh, example with a climate zone of 4A um, and using the St. Louis uh, TMY3 at building level. Our construction geometry convention is ASHRAE 90.1. And we have the tariffs turned on. So first, I'll go ahead and generate the baseline building. Uh, review of those settings. Uh, show that it's going to change our window to wall ratio to be 
uh, across the building based on the, the different facade percentages we had. And now we'll go ahead and generate that baseline building. The other change that uh, will occur in generating this baseline building is that overhang shading on the southern facade will be removed on the baseline building. And I'll show you that once this is done creating. Oh, well, this is going all to point out. So in this building, we've included a server room, which has its own dedicated HVAC system, which is something we will need to handle in our baseline building when we create the HVAC system. So now we have this, the, the baseline building create next to our proposed. And in this, you can see a little, little more clearly that there is this overhang on the proposed building and there's no overhang here on the baseline building. Um, if we want to look at the, again, the construction tab, we can see that it's been changed from what we had selected in our proposed building to the correct um, for our climate zone. Um, so with our baseline building created, we have the geometry, we have our internal gains and schedules, but we have to generate our HVAC system. Now being a much bigger building of the 100,000 square feet, this time we're going to be a packaged uh, VAV with reheat. So again, it is our primary HVAC system. As I was commenting, we have this server room that is not served by the main HVAC, so we need to remove that as a zone served. But all the other zones in this building can be served by the VAV system. Again, we will uh, review our default settings, but we'll go ahead and accept um, these settings for this project and generate our H baseline HVAC system. So here is our baseline VAV system. It's, it's created an air handler for each of the floors. Um, and then all we need to do is add our secondary HVAC system for our server room. So we'll load a template for that. It's not going to be a packaged VAV. Instead, we're going to use a unitary air-to-air -air heat pump in this case. So we set the template. It is our secondary system, so we need to uncheck the, the primary. We don't want to replace what we've already set up. So it is if we by removing that, it leaves us the only zone that is not currently served by an HVAC system, already selected as the server. Um, and we need to select the zone that will control that system, which is the server. And now we've added that secondary um, HVAC system to our baseline building. So we have our primary and our H and secondary uh, ready to go. So this is a much bigger model. So rather than run those results on this uh, webinar and take up that time, I have did that earlier, and I'll now just open up that this project uh, with our results.
now that this is finishing uploading, we'll go to the simulation tab and you can see the results for the proposed building with the energy plus simulation. And if we go to our ASHRAE 90.1, uh, we on the energy consumption, we have a savings of 15.3%. And on costs of 17.8%. So, if this was an actual project, um, it would be time to get to work on in getting a more efficient proposed building in order to increase our savings. Uh, but this is just a demo. So, um, if we go to the summary tab, we can look at the output reports that have been that we requested were produced Energy Plus. Um, you can see normal um, energy summaries for the different categories by zone and subcategory. Um, all the information you can use to review your model and uh, show the results. And here we have the lead summary that we wanted. Uh, as you can see here, it has the general information, space usage, areas, schedules. It has your um, unmet hours. So you can check here if you need to work on your model to improve your unmet hours. And so all the information here that you would need for a lead submittal. In addition to this um, summary report, there is the online lead reporting tool, Laporte. So to get to that, you need to be on the ASHRAE 90.1 tab, and then you have the Laporte um, submission button. So this will prepare your data and open uh, a web page in your browser that will allow you to log into your um, your account. So you do need to have an, an account for this on -ride, online lead reporting. So I'm going to log into my account off screen. And then I'll bring it over. Okay. So now I'm logged into the, the analytics site. And here is the lead online uh, reports. So I go here, this was a lead uh, 2009 project. So when the, the simulation ran, it uh, saved all the Energy Plus files. And then if I wanted to upload those files, I can go and it has prepared this uh, zip file for me of the results. So I can go ahead and submit that project. I went through this process earlier, so I can just edit my previous upload. You can see it starts off with the, the details for your submittal of my fake address and postal code for the building. Uh, just the basic data. Uh, your, your your utility rates location and then based on that and the simulation data it is uh, created these uh, forms and templates for you for your um, lead submittal so if we were to go to say the table 1-4 it again will have these number of screens that ask you for the further information that you would need to include in your uh, lead submittal. 
But once that was done, you can generate these uh, Excel spreadsheet. which will have that um, information for you across the, these, the tabs, this information that goes into your lead submittal. And it's, it's here in the spreadsheet ready to go for your lead submittal. So that's a, a brief look at the lead online reporting tool. So, now to, to show a little more about the lead uh, daylighting analysis and a, a brief talk on life cycle analysis, I will hand the webinar back over to Dave. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Tim. I'm sure that gave um, everybody a great insight into the um, into the latest workflow. So, I'm now going to take a look at the climate-based daylighting tool that enables you to um, generate outputs for lead daylighting credits. I think before we actually start looking at a model, let's quickly refresh ourselves on the uh, the lead daylight credit options. So Design Builder can calculate lead daylighting credits via both the option one and the option two methods. Lead daylighting option one assesses the uh, assesses that daylight autonomy and annual sunlight exposure requirements are met and lead daylighting option two uses a similar illuminance based calculation using a clear sky model similar to that in previous versions of lead most of you will already be familiar with that simpler illuminance based option so we're going to focus our attention today on option two here's the model that we'll be using to briefly introduce our um, latest lead daylighting outputs and this model will, I'm sure, be familiar to those of you who followed some uh, of our free online tutorials. Running annual climate-based daylight calculations takes a lot longer um, than the few minutes that we have available in this webinar. So we've previously generated a set of results uh, to use today. And we'll start with the LEED V4 Daylighting B, D and C credit report. So here you can see that, um, that Daylighting Option 1 report showing that the building meets the requirements for SDA. But it doesn't meet the requirements for ASC. And that's because of large glazed areas in parts of the building. You can drill down into more detailed results by selecting SDA and ASC to see the distribution of the daylight performance metrics for the two main working plane heights in this building. Taking a look now at the detailed distribution map of SDA, we can see that the building has plenty of available natural light over the simulated year. However, 
Looking now at the ASC results, we can see that areas near the glazing have far higher annual illuminance than the lead criteria for ASC allows. We can see that large areas of this building exceed the allowed 250 hours per year of direct sunlight. So the current design clearly risks exposing occupants to visual discomfort through glare. <clears throat> we'll now take a quick look at life cycle analysis or LCA. Most of the data required for LCA is already included in your design builder model. So why not leverage that and extract the maximum possible value from the model you've taken the time to build? To illustrate that, We'll now take a look at our one-click LCA integration, which gives you the power to assess the life cycle performance of your building with one click direct from your design builder model. You might ask why you need one-click LCA. Well, this is because whilst design builders library materials already contain embodied carbon data, which is actually very useful for general and early stage LCA modeling, that doesn't actually comply with the more exacting requirements of LEED and BRIAM and other similar schemes. One click LCA is based on, it, on an extensive database of previously accredited materials. And design builder materials are automatically mapped to one click LCA equivalents when the model is exported from design builder and into one click LCA. We're not going to go into much detail on LCA today because we've scheduled a webinar in late November with the one click LCA team that will be devoted to our integration um, with one click LCA. So this brief introduction was really just to whet your appetite for the webinar later next month. And you should, if you're interested in LCA, um, please do keep your eyes open for the newsletter that will um, uh, be released in, in the next uh, couple of weeks or so, uh, where you'll find um, registration details for that next webinar. As uh, we mentioned at the start of the webinar, we have been using a beta version of Design Builder today. If you have a current V5 license and would like to enroll on our beta test program and gain access to this new version, please contact our support desk to initiate that process. Thanks for listening today. That's the end of our formal presentation, but we'll stay live for another 10 minutes or so, um, and we'll answer as many questions as we can uh, in that time. There will be a brief pause now whilst we review the questions already submitted, and we'll start answering them shortly. Thank you.